Two years ago, City Council President Myrtle Cole made a comment that some say could lead to her political undoing. There's more black-on-black -black shootings in our nation than ever before. Cole represents District 4, which covers neighborhoods such as Oak Park, Encanto, and Paradise Hills. It has the largest percentage of African Americans in the city, according to census data. Many in her district say they heard Cole justifying police shootings of black people. There's a, a, a like new, newer blood kind of coming of age, shall I say, um, in District 4, Southeast San Diego. Um, and, are, and are wanting a more, uh, a representative with a more of like a, a, a radical stance that speaks to the issues that affect them as well. Aaron Harvey is a community organizer in Southeast San Diego. He says Cole's comments were the beginning of a surge of activism among the younger generation. Activism that in part focused on unseating Cole. So there's always been some type of dissatisfaction towards uh, uh, Ms. Cole. I think it was just like, she's just there. Before the comments, they figured they'd wait and support a more progressive candidate at the end of Cole's term. But the fact that she made those comments, and it's like, what that told me was, you just gave law enforcement a green light to kill me. Because a lot of these stops or casual encounters oftentimes result in the death of a black male. Um, and you blamed it on the black, black people on why they're being racially profiled and things like that. I think that started a, a kind of a, okay, now you have to go. <laughs> and now we're going to be more vocal about why you have to go. In the June primary, Cole came in just six votes behind challenger Monica Montgomery. If she loses the November general election, it will be the first time an incumbent San Diego council member has lost re-election since 1991. Cole's campaign didn't respond to multiple interview requests from KPBS. She did apologize in the weeks after she made the comments and said she planned to push for substantial changes in police practices. But Harvey says those changes haven't come. After a study showed there was some racial bias in the San Diego Police Department. She created a, or recreated a, an admissions board, or an advisory board, but that's all it is, just an advisory board. And I don't think that advisory board has done anything. Layla Aziz helps run the nonprofit Pillars of the Community. She says on top of young people like Harvey, Cole also may have to win back people who once supported her. I went and spoke with my neighbor, older gentleman, former military, and part of the old guard, right? Probably voted for Cole the first time. And I asked him, who are you voting for? And he said, anyone besides Cole. And I said, why? And he spoke of the streets. He spoke of never seeing her in the community. KPBS requested Cole's calendar for the last year, along with calendars for all the other council members. We then checked to see who went to the most weekend events in their district, which ranged from dropping by a business opening to attending a cleanup day. Councilman Chris Ward went to the most, averaging about eight a month, sometimes with three or four events on the same day. Other council members went to between three and four events a month. Cole was near the bottom of the list, with one event a month. Only Councilman Scott Sherman attended fewer events, but in the month after the June election, Cole went to four weekend events in her district. Aziz says she feels Cole's focus has been on outside interests like unions or downtown instead of dealing with district problems like fixing streets, adding sidewalks, and cleaning up graffiti. Our councilwoman, as great as she seemed to be doing as council president, as um, pretty much having a leadership title, no longer focused on the people that elected her, forgetting that she would have to still deal with us in the next election. Cole now has less than four months to convince her district she's still focused on them. Claire Tregesser, KPBS 